Hi everyone. So in this tutorial to start off chapter 10, I thought it would be a good idea to actually break down how it is that gas pressure is measured. Um, one of the most simple pieces of instrumentation used to measure the pressure of a gas is a barometer and a related instrument, which is the manometer. Now, a barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure, whereas manometers are used to measure the pressure of a contained gas. Now, as it turns out, it's entirely possible for a chemist to have need of both of these because it's often very important to know what the atmospheric pressure is at any given moment when we're doing experiments regarding uh, systems that have gas phase reactants or products. But if we're going to measure the actual pressure of a gas of interest, then manometers are actually more useful. So let's discuss these two instruments and let's discuss how they're related to each other and how they're used so that things are a bit more clear. Um, your book does go into some detail as to how barometers work. The instrument shown here in this particular diagram is a mercury barometer and basically the way it works is this tube is typically filled with mercury all the way to the top and then inverted into the shallow basin that also contains some mercury. Now what's going to start to happen is gravity is going to start pulling the mercury downward but at the same time the pressure of the gases that make up the atmosphere will push down on the mercury in the basin and subsequently that mercury in the basin is going to start to travel up into the tube as a result. And when the atmospheric pressure and the pressure due to gravity equalize then basically the mercury column will stop moving and we would measure the atmospheric pressure as the height of the mercury column which is why it's very common for pressures to be reported in units of millimeters mercury. So basically the gas interface between the gas and the liquid mercury occurs here within the basin. However, if I wanted to measure a gas of interest, and not necessarily simply the atmospheric pressure, then I'm going to need to modify this instrumental setup so that the gas of interest and the gas of interest alone has its own chance to interact and interface with the mercury that's being used to drive the measurement. And so that's where manometers come in. Now manometers actually can be of one of two configurations. One type of manometer is what we call a closed end manometer. So basically what that means is that this tube right here that's U-shaped is actually sealed off right here. So there is no exposure to the atmosphere. And the only way that the mercury in the tube is going to move and become unequal is if there is a gas here within this round container that has a chance to interact with that mercury at this point. The pressure of the gas in this particular case would be equal to the height difference from one side of the U-shaped tube to the other. So in this case the pressure of the gas is equal to the height of the mercury column. But it's more common to actually come across open-ended manometers. Now in those particular instruments basically at this point of the U-shaped tube, this is open to the atmosphere. So this provides the atmosphere a way to interact with the mercury column on this side of the tube. On the other side of the tube, we have the gas that's trapped within the sphere, spherical shaped container here, interacting with the mercury on this end. But in this particular case, notice that the amount of mercury that's actually exposed to the atmosphere, so essentially here, 
the pressure of the atmosphere is working on this end. And notice that it's pushed the mercury down further on its side of the tube than the gas has been able to on its side of the tube. And so because of this, we can actually conclude that the pressure of the gas, in this case, is less than the pressure of the atmosphere, since the atmosphere is pushing its side of the mercury down more. And so if I wanted to calculate the pressure of the gas, I would have to subtract from this atmospheric pressure. What I would subtract would be this height differential between the two sides of the mercury column. So if I have a manometer in which the side that's exposed to the atmosphere, its mercury level is below the mercury level of the arm that's attached to the gas of interest, then if I'm going to calculate the pressure of the gas, I would subtract the height differential from the pressure of the atmosphere. Now, if we look at the diagram all the way on the right, notice that here we have the opposite scenario. In this particular case, what's going on is the pressure of the gas is actually greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. Notice that the atmosphere is not able, the atmospheric pressure is not able to push the mercury down below the level where the gas of interest meets the mercury. In this particular case, what that means is that the pressure of the gas is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. So that means if I'm going to calculate the pressure of the gas, I'm going to need to add to the atmospheric pressure. And the amount that I would add to the atmospheric pressure would be equal to the height differential between the two sides of the U-shaped tube. So here, I would be adding the height differential to the atmospheric pressure to get the pressure of the gas. So let's apply this to some examples. Okay, let's do the first three on this particular sheet. Okay, so notice here that I have a manometer here in problem number one where the mercury level is the same on both sides of the U-shaped tube. They want us to calculate what the atmospheric pressure is. All right, now, not only do they want us to calculate that value, but they want us to express it in atmospheres. And so, if that's the case, then we should recognize because both sides of the U shaped tube contain equal amounts of mercury, that the pressure of the gas must equal the atmospheric pressure. So all I need to do to solve this problem is take this pressure, 125.6 kilopascals, and convert it to atmospheres, and then that should give me the answer that I need. So let me pull up some virtual paper, if you will, and I'm going to convert 125.6 kilopascals. I'm going to convert that to atmospheres. So if you recall, and they mentioned this conversion factor in the book, there are 101.325 kilopascals in every atmosphere. Okay, so I'm going to do this math. Notice that my units of kilopascals will cancel out. And when I do this math, I end up with 1.240 atmospheres. So then that would mean that my answer here is 1.240 atmospheres. Now let's have a look at the second problem. Okay, now in this case, the unknown is the height differential. All right, they want us to report that height in millimeters of mercury. We're told that the atmospheric pressure is 112.8 kilopascals, and the pressure of the gas that's contained inside the spherical container is 0.78 atmospheres. So because the level of the mercury is lower on the side that is exposed to the atmosphere, that means that the pressure of the gas is less than the pressure of the atmosphere. So if I were to do this math, 
Oops, there we go. Then let's see. Okay, here, that would mean that the pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure. And from that, I'm going to subtract the height differential. I'm going to solve for the height differential. And so if I solve for the height differential, that is the pressure of the atmosphere minus the pressure of the gas. Now, I want to get my height differential in units of millimeters of mercury. So the atmospheric pressure was given in units of kilopascals. I'm going to have to convert that. 101.325 kilopascals for every 760 millimeters of mercury. From that, I'm going to subtract all right, the pressure of the gas that was given in atmospheres. So I'm going to have to convert atmospheres to millimeters of mercury. For every one atmosphere, there were 760 millimeters of mercury. So if I take 112.8 kilopascals, subtract out one, uh, I'm sorry, 112.8 kilopascals, multiply by 760, divide by 101.325, then I will go and I'll get the atmospheric pressure in millimeters of mercury, subtract that out from the pressure of the gas, also converted to millimeters of mercury, and if I do this math properly, I should get 253 millimeters of mercury. And so, my response to this problem should be 253 millimeters of mercury. Now let's take a look at the final problem, problem number three, all the way over here on the right. Now, in this case, you'll see that the circumstances are different from the second problem. In this particular case, the gas pressure is actually greater than the atmospheric pressure, since the amount of mercury that is on its side of the U-shaped tube is actually pushed down further than the amount of mercury that's exposed to the atmosphere. And so what that means is, if I'm going to solve for the height differential, then that means that the pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the height differential. Solving for the height differential, that's the pressure of the gas minus the pressure of the atmosphere. Once again, I'm being asked to report the height in units of millimeters of mercury, so that means I'm going to need to convert the 98.4 kilopascals to millimeters of mercury, so that's 760 millimeters of mercury for every 101.325 kilopascals. From that, I'm going to subtract the atmospheric pressure, which was reported in units of atmospheres, and I'm going to have to convert from atmospheres also two millimeters of mercury, so that's 760 millimeters of mercury for every one atmosphere. If I go ahead and do this math, then that means that the height differential comes out to 297 millimeters of mercury. So that would be my response for this particular problem. So work on the follow-up assignment where there are a few more manometer problems included. Uh, we'll also be following up with an assignment in class tomorrow so that you guys are comfortable with this before moving on. If there are any questions, again, email or speak to me in class tomorrow. Have a good night.